Hello? Cheese and cheese and cheese is happiness. I was not a cheerleader. <laughs> dish for you today that is a little bit unexpected. It's cheesy, it's creamy, it's perfect for gathering, and you can even make it ahead of time or finish it off in the oven as guests are coming into your home. It's my extra cheesy sweet potato gratin. And I'm so excited to bring you this riveting content today because many of you noticed that I left off on a cliffhanger in my loaded baked potato soup video when I didn't get to share all the ways that I love sweet potatoes. I did not even mention sweet potatoes. You all didn't realize you were tuning into such a suspenseful show. The cliffhangers. Today we're gonna prepare these sweet potatoes in a way that I absolutely love them. It's cheesy, it's creamy, it's so savory. Let's start off by preheating our oven to 400 degrees and let's prepare our sweet potatoes. A gratin is a dish that has an ingredient that is covered in a brown crust. And that brown crust can be breadcrumbs, it can be cheese, it can be butter. Whee! Ours is gonna be cheese. Welcome to Home Improvements with Brie McCoy. You all, I did pull my mini measuring tape out. I always have a mini measuring tape in my kitchen because you would not believe the things that I always am finding myself measuring. How big is this baking sheet? How big is this? How wide? How small? How tall? I'm just, it's a secret MVP of my kitchen. We are going to slice these sweet potatoes pretty thinly. I like to do it about an eighth of an inch. A great way you can make sure you're definitely gonna get an eighth of inch for every slice is by using a mandolin. I don't use a mandolin. I don't wanna talk about it. Well, there's a story. And I wasn't even using it. So try to piece that story together. The mysteries of my kitchen. Newsflash, mandolin attacks women unprovoked. <laughs> unprovoked? Unprovoked. I'm gonna show you what an eighth of an inch looks like if you aren't using a mandolin. According to this measuring tape, my trusty little measuring tape, an eighth inch is between the one and the next biggest line that you see. If you don't stock your kitchen with mini measuring tape, close enough measurement is the space between two fork tines. So this space right here. And that's what we're gonna go for. Although I am winging it, I'm just gonna use my trusty chef's knife. And so some of them might be a little smaller, some might be a little thicker. We're not gonna be too precious about it. That's about what we're going for. I'm going to thinly slice one yellow onion and also prepare our fresh herbs. And then we'll be able to move to the stove. I remember the first time I saw Rachel Ray use a trash bowl, and I, I was like, this has changed everything for me. But it, it actually hasn't, because when I had seen her do it, I was not cooking actively. I was actively staying out of the kitchen. But I remember being like, that's cool for home cooks. If you're into that sort of thing. If you're into that sort of thing. If, cooking. if you're into cooking. I didn't fully get this perfectly sliced in half. I'm gonna do a fine chop on both of them, but for this one, I'm just gonna go down once through the middle. I'm gonna go down through this twice. Once a little closer to the bottom, a little closer to the top for this one. And as you can see, my palm is flat, so the knife isn't gonna go through my palm. You don't have to use an extra bowl to put your onions or ingredients in. I really like to do this because I prep everything usually before I even head to the stove. So I just like to have all my ingredients out. Also, I don't like the idea of my onion like marinating my board. I love using fresh herbs in this dish. I feel like it just brings everything together and it cuts through the richness of the cheese and the cream. For this dish, I use fresh thyme. I'm going to use about half a tablespoon of fresh thyme and then about a teaspoon of fresh rosemary. Fresh rosemary is much more aromatic than fresh thyme. I feel like thyme is a little bit more of a delicate herb versus rosemary. I feel like sometimes rosemary can really... Waft itself? <laughs> that was supposed to be a slap. But a violent wafting can be aggressive. I have an herb stripper and I'm a little bit shy about it. 
I try not to have too many gadgets in my kitchen that are like, and to peel your banana, you use this tool. And it's like, that's the, that's the only use for the tool is to peel the banana. But we were at this local kitchen store and it just looked so cute. It was calling to me. And so now I own a stripper of the herb variety. <laughs> I use it mostly for cilantro and parsley because obviously thyme is so easy to get off. You can just pinch it and pull the leaves right off for our rosemary. I'm just gonna pull the leaves off. Now we're going to pull together our onion mixture. I am using the same pan that I'm gonna use to build the rattan in. We'll start with a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of oil. Add our onion. I'm gonna reserve this bowl because we're gonna to need to put our onion mixture back in here when we go to build our gratin. Fresh herbs. One teaspoon salt. And a fourth teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Give it a good mix. And I'm keeping this on medium heat. I just want the onions to soften. I don't really want them to brown. It will stay on medium heat for about three to five minutes. This is exactly how I want my onion mixture looking. The onions are softened. They're almost translucent, but they aren't browned. We're gonna set this aside. We're ready to bring our cream mixture together. And so of course, a tablespoon of butter and one cup of heavy cream. You all, this dish is absolutely decadent. A fun addition, you all, is this dish calls for Parmesan cheese. I've already freshly shredded my Parmesan cheese and I have the rind of the Parmesan here. And I'm just gonna add that into my cream sauce to flavor it. If you don't have the Parmesan rind, that's fine. If you do, throw it in there. We'll remove it once we're ready to use this sauce. This is exactly the consistency that we're looking for. So I'm just gonna turn this off. I'm gonna fish out my Parmesan rind. the cheese that keeps on giving. And I can just go ahead and discard this. Time to assemble. I like setting up a little assembly station for myself, just so I'm not running all over the kitchen grabbing everything. I have my sliced sweet potatoes. I have a healthy cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. I have a cup and a half, about five ounces of shredded Fontina cheese, or you can use Gruyere. I love Gruyere in this, but I could only find Fontina today. And our onion mixture. You can use a braiser like I'm using, or you can just use a baking dish. We want to first start with our sweet potatoes. Just layer them in there. They're obviously not going to fit together exactly like puzzle pieces because these are rounds but I just try to eliminate any glaring space like this right here. Next, we'll add our onion mixture. We're gonna use this for several layers, so we don't wanna use the full onion layer mixture, just a sprinkling of it. I'd say about two or three big spoonfuls. Now we'll go in with our two different kinds of cheese. We have Parmesan, Make sure that you reserve about half a cup of the Parmesan for the top layer. A nice amount of the Fontina. We'll just layer like this until we run out of ingredients. I can usually get about two to three layers. Some of our onion mixture. Just a little bit more Parmesan cheese and a good amount of Fontina. Third layer, and I can tell this is gonna be my last layer. And we're actually gonna end with the onion mixture and top later with the cheese after we've baked it for a while. The last topping before we add our cream sauce is that onion mixture. Now we are going to slowly pour our cream sauce all over this dish. This is ready to go into the oven for 40 minutes. This
smells so good. It's been in the oven for about 40 minutes. It's time to finish this gratin off, and we're gonna do that just by adding a layer of cheese on the top. I have my broiler turned on to high, so we can get this cheese all nice and bubbly. Back into the oven under the broiler until the cheese is nice and melty, about three to five minutes. I can't wait any longer. It's been a few minutes. I really wanna take a taste. I hope that I do not destroy my taste buds, but let's get in there. Oh my gosh. She's steamy. Mmm! Mmm! Oh my gosh, you all. It's so decadent. It's so delicious. The sweet potatoes still have like a little bit of bite to them. The cheese is just so melty and yummy. This is an insanely savory dish. It would pair so well with any kind of chicken or turkey dish. This is for sure a crowd pleaser and one that you will come back to time and time again. Put me on the case. Cheddar, or parmesan, or gruyere, or mozzarella. Cheese raining down.